Recovering the Way is a combination of um, mind-body medicine exemplified by Qigong and a little bit of oriental medicine, uh, some knowledge of Western, uh, Western science, and the, uh, an application of, of what are called the 12 step, the 12 step paradigm, which is another one. Uh, the 12 step paradigm is another one of the world's leading and classic uh, healing paradigms. And that is something that deals with a spiritual nature. And I'm, I'm going to begin just with a, a little, there's a little reading that I picked up today. And uh, this is from a Daily Reflections book for, for people in recovery. So we can maybe, you know, substitute a word for something else. Uh, the trouble with us alcoholics, and when we say alcoholics, we can say people who are uh, uh, compulsively attracted to something, people who are addicted to whether it's the, the television or, or the food or other people. But the trouble with us alcoholics was this. We demanded that the world give us happiness and peace of mind in just the particular order we wanted it, by the alcohol route or by the whatever route. And we weren't successful. But when we take time to find out some of the spiritual laws and familiarize ourselves with them and put them into practice, then we do get happiness and peace of mind. There seem to be some rules that we have to follow, but happiness and peace of mind are always here, open, free to everyone. So one of those, um, or a couple of those, if we will, spiritual laws, this is really where the idea of, of the combination of opposites of yin and yang come in, that the spiritual law is that the opposite of up is down. The opposite of inside is outside. The opposite of excessive is deficient. The opposite of stagnant is flowing. And these are the very, very simple basics that an oriental medicine practitioner will use when they're diagnosing a patient. We are our own doctor in this practice. And it is really that the, um, the, the, the tools of inquiry that we use are very, very simple that we notice if we're up, we notice if we're down, we notice if we're stuck, we notice if we're moving. And the tools of inquiry themselves are actually the medicinal process. Uh, <clears throat> so in, re, in the 12-step paradigm, they talk about coming to believe that powers greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And, and instead of going all the way out to the ethereal and the God question and the um, what is the nature of the divine, because we get into that in recovering the way, we start off very, very simply with the paradigm of oriental medicine. Uh, the paradigm of oriental medicine as exemplified in uh, rooting the moved, lifting up the stuck, uh, releasing that which we're holding on to. And what is really key is that, you know that, that the yin-yang symbol that we all know, and it's got the, 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 the paisley fish on one side with a little you know, mark of black in the white one, and then the white one has that little mark of black in it, right? So that paradigm, that moving paradigm, that when we watch it, there's something that's really not seen in that, in that yin-yang symbol. And what's not seen in the yin-yang symbol is the observer. That without the observer, there is no yin and yang. Without the observer, we don't have any tools. So very, very simply, 
what we do is that we use our thinking mind to watch what is going on in the body. Watch what's going on in the heart. So we're going to start off with, and, and we have some newer people here and those people that have been practicing for a longer time. Now is the time to kind of uh, deepen, deepen these very, very simple practices. Now, I am going to be standing up. You can stand up. You can sit down. Stay comfortable. We're going to be doing practices that are so seamlessly easy that people who are impaired will be able to do it. That this is something that will not be on anyone's uh, uh, level of comfort. And if it is, adjust yourself to where it is comfortable. So we're going to stand up or sit down, whichever the case may be. Find a comfortable spot. Seated is fine, standing is fine. And what we're going to do, we've done this exercise many, many times, is that we're going to put down. You ever come home and I do this, I do this and sometimes it's like, you know, I'm going to turn off the computer because I don't want the noise. I'm going to turn off the phone, right? I'm going to lock the door. I'm going to have some quiet. But here's just a question. Is the residue of the phone still in your hand? Is the residue of what I'm going to be looking at in the computer screen still like four inches in front of my eyes or five inches in front of my eyes because that's where I tune in. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to put down whatever residue of that phone there is. Okay, it'll be there. It'll be there later. It'll be there in an hour. Don't worry about it. Let your hands go. Relax your fingers. The shoulders. Check in with the shoulders. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to stop looking out and start looking in. Okay? In a very, very simple way. Check in with one of your shoulders. Is it hiked up as if we're walking around with a basket full of groceries? Is, is it raised like I'm going to be holding the phone? And if it is, what can you do? to let it go. Tune in to the feet. Very often I'll check in and I'll see, hey, my toes are squirming. Are the toes still moving? And if they are, what can we do to relax them? So you know, the opposite of moving is stillness. But there's a type of stillness that we think that we've attained, but that's really a very, very constrictive type of, I'm going to force myself to stay still. That's not what we're doing here. This is really an investigation. What can I do to relax not only my fingers, but an inch beyond the fingers? Check in with the tailbone the coccyx. And as if we had a long tail, you know, we have the vestigial apparatus for the tail. We've lost it. But if we just imagine that we now have that tail again, you can feel it kind of boinking in the air behind you. What I'm going to ask you to do is let it thump on the ground. Just let it go. So the opposite of tense is loose. The opposite of, of tension is becoming more relaxed. So we're starting to actually entreat the system and entreat the body to slip away from the sympathetic portion of the autonomic nervous system into the parasympathetic. Feel your ears. Imagine that you could just relax your ears. 
the jaw. Now, in Qigong, there's something called a lining, okay? That is the entrance to the practice of Tai Chi. And a lining means, well, we would say that a lining means that we're going to put ourselves somewhere. And in the paradigm of yin and yang, that's between heaven and earth. So notice the floor under the feet. Our center of gravity is actually in a place that doesn't touch the ground. It's about, oh, an inch or so, or inch and a half to two inches in front of the ankle, depending upon the length of your foot, the size, our size. Our center of gravity is actually in a place that never touches the ground. So we're getting ready to move. And the way that we get ready to move is that we get to a point where the stillness starts to be overcome by a desire to move. So stick with it a little longer. We're going to do a little exercise here to trigger the autonomic nervous system into the parasympathetic. We've done this before. When we clip our nails, there's no sensation. But that skin underneath the nail bed, if you've ever got anything stuck there, like a little splinter, we know it is the most tender, the most sensitive skin in the body. And what I'm going to ask you to do is go out to one of your pinkies, either the left pinky or the right pinky, and in your mind's eye, go all the way out to that soft, fleshy, pulpy skin under the nail bed. We're using our thinking mind, our everyday mind, to tune in to our own body. Tune into that soft, soft, pulpy tissue. And as if it's a muscle now, I want you to relax it. And tune in. Notice what happens. And you may notice nothing. You may notice a sense of flushing. A sense of whoosh. So in Oriental medicine, the channels begin and end at the fingertips. And what we're doing here is we're actually now triggering the parasympathetic portion of the autonomic nervous system. Try to do it with one of your toes. It may be a little less distinct because so much more of our brain is involved in the sensory experience of the hands, but if we stick with it a moment, we can do it. Good. So, so often we say, well, how can I quiet myself down? You know, how can I stop? And it was very well said that we you know, have to tune out from something. And it's human nature to tune into something. So right now what we're doing is we're tuning in to what's going on in our own body. And there's a wealth of information there. And we're going to be spending this hour tuning into the connection between the heart, the mind, and the body. So if you're comfortable where you are, okay, that's fine. If you want to open up a little more, I'm going to do that. And the way that we do it to open up a little more is that we lean on one foot. You may have even noticed, I see people like swaying a little bit as we're doing this. It's natural to sway. That's the way we return blood to the heart. 
So we, we do sway naturally. So as you sway, when you get to one side, pour a little extra weight on it. Enough weight that you can hold up your whole body for a moment. And when that happens, open up the other side. Great. And then let that tail drop. Drop the tail. Yin. Stillness. Quiet. Earth. And yang, its opposite, the clarity of sky. Imagine that you could relax one inch right beyond the top of your head. And just notice what that feels like. The acupuncturist puts needles all over the body to trigger a similar type of response. Energy fields are put into a state of coherence. So we're going to actually now start to do some moving. And we're going to let our hands come forward. And then lift them up. We've done this before. Up to about mid-chest. Turn them over and come down. And then they're going to come behind us turning around again and coming up. So we spoke about eternal laws. Okay, now eternal laws, we can, we can go into a moralistic sense if we want. We can go into the laws of physics if we want. We can go into many different types of principles, but here we're going to stick with the most basic of which the, the, the yin-yang paradigm is so instructive. Earth is stillness, matter, the world we see, and yang is the world of the energetic, the non-visible, and the intuitive. So we're made of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and all those things that assimilate from the earth. Yet there's an aspect of us that is non-visible. And the interplay between yin and yang, well, that's played out in the day that we have morning, Increase of morning to noon, and then the afternoon starts and night comes. We have the heartbeat itself, right? We have the breath, the beginning of inhalation, the increase, the apex, and the decrease. And we would, I can say, and I can say, well, that's great, Dan. That's so what? So what? That's like so obvious. Why do we need to talk about this? Well, that's because, well, we spoke about this combination of opposites. I can get stuck in the anxious. I can get stuck in the elevated. I can get stuck in the moving. I can get stuck in the chasing the head of the kite. Okay? Thinking that I can grab onto it. But the opposite of the movement is the stillness. Now, the observer is us, each of us in our own minds, our own hearts, our own bodies. Tune into what does this feel like in the cognitive mind? What does this feel like in the body? What does it feel like in the emotional center? Because this is what we're going to be working with. So we could do this three more times and we're going to move on. And we call this just moving. And we call it just moving because it's kind of like 
the Zen sitting, just sitting. But rather than doing that, which is kind of hard and kind of boring, we're stopping the thought, the, the thinking, the talking process, and tuning in here to something that is trans, transient and something that is eternal. So let's bring our hands up now in front again, okay? And we're going to put our palms out. So restoring flow, which we were doing with just moving, is one aspect of Oriental Medicine. Another is that if we feel we're being crowded upon, if we feel we're too concentrated, what we're going to do is push out in front. Push, you know, whether it's another plate of food, or if it's the computer screen, or if it's just that feeling that you're getting in my space, we're going to push it out. And if we feel the whole world is pushing us in, and the weight of the world is on our shoulders, that's a really tough thing going on right now, right? It's like, I think I got to keep on tuning into all of this stuff. And why? Do they really need me? I mean, why am I doing it? Right? The rock and the hard place. Getting stuck between the rock and the hard place. So this is also a form of Qigong called purifying Qi. And now we're going to push down. So let's do this again. And you push out whatever it is that you think that you want to push away. And as we're doing it, just notice, does it feel like something's happening? Does it feel like something is transacting? And one more time. Great. Okay. So now we're going to do our little old friend of ringing the gong. And what that is, is swinging from side to side. And use your body to move the hands. Okay, when I first started doing this, I would use the hands to move the body. But it's really the other way around. And the body moves the hands. So the hands are kind of like flags going in the wind. And when I say the body, where does it come from? I'm going to suggest from the hips, and then from the knees, and then from the ankles, and then from the feet. One of the things about Tai Chi is that all parts of the body are engaged in movement. There is no isolated part. And this is now also part of a spiritual lesson. Can we feel like a unified whole, even just physically? I mean, I, I know a lot of times we feel fragmented. We feel dispersed. We feel like we don't even know who we are. And we're going to, there's an old saying, pick on someone your own size. You know, don't take a fight. Pick a fight with somebody bigger than you. Well, right now we have somebody just perfectly our own size. And the journey to really finding ourselves and knowing ourselves and being comfortable with ourselves, well, we can start at a really, really simple level. This is just kind of physical. And it's a little fun and it's a great exercise to move lymphatic fluid. It's a great exercise to get the tendons more supple. It's a great exercise to incre increase circulation, and it's kind of fun. And it's called ringing the temple gong. And the purpose of that bell, we've spoken about this before, the purpose of the bell in the cathedral, 
before there were telephones, before there were radios, right? Before there was anything, the purpose of the bell is to notify the community that something is going on. So let your hands touch the body. Let your hands hit. And these are the clappers hitting the body of the bell. Can you feel that somewhere in here, somewhere in here, like a Ferris wheel, there's some area that is the center? Without losing your balance, without really, you know, going too, too far, what I'd like you to do is kind of just sense inside. And again, one of these eternal principles is exterior and interior. So from the tips of the fingers, there is a connection from the very tips of the fingers to the very, very, very center. And you may not find it, but you may find its proximity. And that's all we need to do. Knowing that I have a center, knowing that I have a place to go to, knowing that there is a possibility of me being unified, that's a game changer. And the method of inquiry is looking inward. The second step of recovery after admitting that we're you know, not working well and just not, not getting it together, is coming to believe that powers transient to ourselves greater that we are part of could restore us to sanity. That is hope. And noticing hope is a game changer. Noticing where we are in space, noticing that we have this capacity to quiet ourselves down, to notice and be comfortable in our own skin. You know, we've heard that one before. You know, is that, is that a joke? Is that a cruel joke to say, be comfortable in your own skin? It's like exactly how am I going to start to do that? I got so much stuff to think about and so many things to do and people are all over me and they want this and they want that and, 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 when, I'm, and when, when I turn off the radio I got all of these guests and clamoring and I got all this stuff going on in my head. How the hell am I going to be comfortable in my own skin? And I know that because I didn't read it in the book. So giving the mind something to do, having somewhere to go, as it says in the I Ching. So we're going to do this another few times, quietly, and then we're going to move on again. Five. Four. Three, two, one, and come to a rest. Now we've been standing a while. If you're okay standing, that's great. If you want to move your feet a little bit, okay, to get the blood moving, that's fine. If you want to sit down, that's fine. We're going to do a gathering breath. We've done this before. So what we're going to do is open our hands up, open the hands, and as if we're washing ourselves with a, an elixir from a bowl in front of us, we're going to let whatever it is cascade over us. So use your imagination that there's some 
either it's a liquid or it's an essence or it's an energy and we're going to let it just wash over us. And notice, and this is just a question, does it feel like something's happening? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. And is it good? We're starting to play a little bit with what we would call chi, which is maybe it's an electromagnetism, maybe some of it is suggestion, maybe some of it is more and then can be explained. The word chi is used in over 500 conjunctions in Chinese. In the West, we, they called it in ancient Greeks, they, may, they might have called it pneuma, Orgone, energy, and the suspension of questioning and the increase of noticing is paramount here. Great. When we come up next time, just let our hands come together in front. And what I want you to do is make a little ball. Imagine that there's a ball here and, oh, the ball could be three inches, the ball could be six inches, okay? The ball can be, and as we do it, if you want, let the tailbone drop, head rise, and just sort of play a little bit with whatever it is that you sense here. You can't do it wrong. So sometimes I'll do it by letting one hand run up the underside of the arm and feel what's going on there. Sometimes I'll do it as if I'm washing my hands. Sometimes I'll do it with the backs of the hands facing each other. And notice, what is, is there something that feels like it's transacting? Mm -hmm. And this would be a manifestation of what is called chi. And let's make this little ball here in front of us. And what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it. And then we're going to compress. And here we have another combination of opposites. So when we stretch, we make this little kind of bird's beak as if we're pulling. And then when we return, we open the palm and push. Can I stretch? the notion of what I think I am. Noticing, what does this feel like? We're now going to let our left hand open up and come up almost over our shoulder. And then let it return. The other one is in the center. And then the right, as if we're stretching like a taffy, and then coming back. And we're going to do this a few times now, stretching up and back. Great. Now this is exercise, and up and back. And here's a question. You're going to get a few questions. Is your breath following the movement? For example, a question, is the breath coming in as you go up and down as you go back? Is it exhaling as you go out? 
Is it inhaling as you go back? And this is just a question. And the noticing is the medicinal process. So one hand is staying in front and the other hand is doing the moving, but they both share in the experience. And now let's let our hand, our head follow the hand that's moving. So it'll follow the left hand when it comes up. Coming back to the center. Can you feel a little compression there as you come back and following? Imagine that that left hand, well, that's yesterday, right? That's everything that happened, all the thoughts about it, right? All of the things that happened yesterday. And then we have tomorrow and noticing what does tomorrow look like? Right. So noticing. Noticing the world of yesterday. And that's another one of those combinations of opposites and then noticing tomorrow. Right, our heads following up. And now we're going to make a really subtle but very important shift here. That we're going to watch the still hand and the hand is going to come up of yesterday. And we're going to stay focused on our still, steady hand in the middle. And then the hand goes up. And tomorrow's over there. And here's a question. With everything that happened yesterday, can I stay in this present moment here, now, with all of its regrets and all of its memories and all of its good stuff and all of its bad stuff, can I stay here in this moment? And now, with tomorrow, with all of its beckoning and promises and worries and, and thoughts about, can I stay here, right now, in this moment, here? Stay in the present. This is part of what is called a transmutation of changing our focus, changing and noticing that the present moment is so powerful. Tomorrow is nothing without the present. Does not exist. Yesterday is nothing without the present. Fantastic. Let's bring our hands back. This is exercise. We're really working here. We're going to cook that up a little bit, make that, make that nice, juicy energy of the present moment. Wonderful. And we're going to put our hands one above the other. And one is going to go down to yin, one up to yang. Stretching. And then condensing and turning over. And we're going to do that again. Sometimes I'm so sure I see things a certain way. I'm so positive, right? I'm sure of it. And then all of a sudden, I have this moment where it, everything turns around and it's exactly the opposite of what I thought. That's part of human nature. It's part of the way we are. So noticing that we do that without judging ourselves, noticing that we can see things one way And then they really are another way. And we're going to do that one more time quietly.
Great. So now we're going to put our hands in front and we're going to push out and down. And then we're going to bring them up in front. Almost like a little bit of a circle or a Ferris wheel, or this is called a water wheel. Push out and down. And again, now you may follow or notice your breath following the movement. This is a pull. And this is a push. There are two vertically oriented channels in oriental medicine called the, the Dew Channel, which runs up the back over the head to the cleft in the palate, and then the Ren Channel, which runs from the cleft in the palate to the perineum. And what we're doing here is we are noticing that. Well, the best way to notice that is notice what happens when it ain't working well. How many times do I have stuff stuck up in my head? Anxious. Can't stop thinking. And what we're doing here is like a waterfall. We're entreating all of that excess to flow naturally back down to the belly. The Tao Te Ching says that the, the sage, which is each of us, rules by emptying minds and stuffing bellies. Returning to the root. Do this one more time. And now we're going to take a little moment and rest. We've been doing a lot of work. Thumbs can rest in the navel. We're going to move on, but I want to take a little time here just to kind of assimilate a lot of the stuff we've been doing. If it's more comfortable to let your hands down by your sides, let them down by your sides. And we're still in the practice, but we're not really actively doing anything now, what we're going to do is let that tail thump on the ground. Feel the parts of the feet that are touching the ground and what can we do to relax them more. And come back to where we started from. Imagine not only could you relax your fingers, but you could relax the invisible airspace right between your fingers. That when you breathed out, you could actually breathe out tension right from your fingertips. That you could relax one inch below the bottoms of your feet, beyond the ends of your toes. We're starting to increase now the generation of oxytocin, serotonin, GABA. The cortisol is dissipating, but like a giant ocean liner that is making a turn in the ocean, it takes time for that to happen. In the creation of the universe, it took God time. Everything did not happen at once. And there's, there's wonderful science there now that talks of how the oxytocin, serotonin, GAB is generated and bound to white blood cells and exuded from the brain right into our circulatory system. And when these neuropeptides get to the interstitial tissues in the fluid of the body, the body sends back its own pinging, noticing that it is safe. 
So we're very busy doing stuff now. We're not moving, but we are extremely busy doing stuff. And notice what it feels like. Just catalog for the moment. What does it feel like? I will tell you that it feels smooth. It feels good. It feels relaxing. Yet there's a part of me that is tapping the toes and saying, when the hell are we going to do something? This is as great as can be. When's it going to stop? That is human nature. Riding on a donkey looking for a donkey is what people do. So let's do a little shaking out now. We're going to do a little shaken out. We've been doing this for a while. And ah, taking a little breath in. So there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of different, what we call systems. You know, we have the neurological system, the circulatory system, the endocrine system, the lymphatic system. There's another system which is not really spoken about that much. And that is the fascia, the interconnecting fascia system all throughout the body. That's what the acupuncturist will put the needles into. And the fascia, that layer which shrouds the muscles, okay, which interconnects the tissues, the physoelectric conductivity of that, that we have electricity moving through and through our own practices here, we start to get into a state of coherence. So we're going to take a seat in a minute and do a little, a little self massage. But before we do that, just take a, take a one more little catalog and how does it feel? These practices are seamlessly simple. And they bring into the body a sense of awareness, which is elusive to us. It's this is very, very, very practical stuff. And what it really is, is that we're taking our thinking mind and we're looking inward, not just on a, in a way, and I'm going to sit down, not just in a way to relax our body, but also to look into our emotional selves. It's a fact that more goes from, and I'm talking chemical, electrical, more information goes from the heart to the brain than from the brain to the heart. And learning to tune in to the somatic experience, learning to tune in to what is going on in the body is not only very informative, it is the medicinal process. So when we start to look in and we start to do these practices of, of relaxation and we start to look into our emotional selves, we don't necessarily then have to say, okay, well, now I'm going to put this into practice and I'm going to heal. The practice of doing it is the healing. And as we do this more and more, we start to accumulate it like putting money into the bank. And we train our self. So the paradigm of oriental medicine, of the combination of opposites, is it moving? Is it still? Is it dense? Is it sparse? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it inside? Is it outside? Merging that together with the simplicity of the process of noticing and that there are powers in the universe that can bring us to sanity, making a decision to turn our will over, noticing our emotional selves. This is part of what the 12-step paradigm can offer. 
And there's so much science out there which validates what's going on. So we're going to do a little self-massage now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to, there's a little tiny little pad, the web of the hands, okay? I know before we've, we've, we've done some massage like in, the, in the, the body of the hand, but this time we're actually going to go to the little web, okay, between the pinky and the ring finger. Okay, give it, you can give it a little squeeze. It's very tender, very tender skin, so you may not want to, you know, really, really give that a massage. That's not an area that you use a lot of pressure. There's times to use a lot of pressure, times to use minimal pressure. But what I want to do is just get an awareness of that web. Get an awareness of that little, 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 little section of skin. And imagine that when you breathe out, take a nice breath in, and when you breathe out, you could breathe out right through this little space between the ring finger and the pinky. Now, we assign the word breath to it and do, to do it again, but it's really that we start to become aware of this sensation of chi. And then we actually start to be able to command it a little bit and go to the next finger. So when I spoke about relaxing the spaces between the fingers, You know, that's a place we really don't think about much. But it helps us to relax the entire hand. Go to the next finger, over. And we can go to that space between the index finger and the thumb. And now in our mind's eye, take a nice breath in, and we're going to breathe out and direct chi through all five, all four of those at the same time. Take a breath in and breathe out. Great. And then we're going to breathe in by pulling back to us. Pull back. Pull, breathe in. And then breathe out again through those spots. And when we breathe in, use your imagination. We're going to breathe in right through the bottoms of the feet, up the legs, into the belly. And then breathing out. Breathe in. and out. So we're inducing flow through our entire body. This will be the last one, this hand, and then we're going to switch over to the other. And breathing in. Now, all of us are, of course, usually only right-handed or left-handed. There's very, very few people that are truly ambidextrous. And I would ask you, just notice in the, in the hand, in the body, in the mind, in the spirit, is there a difference in the sensation, in the flavor, in the texture of this from one hand to the other? And you may not sense anything, and that's okay. You are grooming yourself for this to happen. And now both hands at the same time. Can I let go? Can I let go of needing to hold on? And can I acquire and breathe in something spectacular and something marvelous and something new?
you know, part of this 12 step process is finding some higher power, alternate energies in the universe does not have to be anthropomorphic. It can be sensorial. The body intuits the mind. Usually when we talk about finding some sense of the divine, some sense of the eternal, some sense of that which transcends, that is almost always a bodily apprehended experience. And it is the bodily apprehended experience that informs the heart. And then the heart then informs the brain. It is hardly ever that the brain figures it out on its own. So this is going to be a really good place for us to kind of put this down today finding our own sense of the divine and using the tools of inquiry, using the sensations that are coming in and informing the gut, which then informs the nervous system and the heart and then sends the information to the brain and the brain can then take some time to process. Recovering the way. Indeed. And it does not say discovering the way because I am not helping you discover anything. I am helping you recover what is our natural birthright. So we can let our hands down now. 